kind of a short little random clip, but figured it was kind of cool. We are currently running on 100% solar. I am working from home today, and you can see we have five amps coming in. We're consuming five amps. And the neat thing is, is that this little expander here has a PD output, 18 watts, which unfortunately is too low powered for my laptop. So I want to upgrade to a 30 or 60 watt, a 12 volt PD charger. But the cool thing is, is that I am currently charging my cell phone. So I found myself actually kind of holding off on charging cell phones and things like that until the sun is overhead and we have excess solar power. So I'm going to have to think of how I want to utilize that excess solar power and essentially pump it into certain uh, pieces of technology such as phones, laptops, etc. Anything that has a battery with it. And even this camera itself actually has a USB charger on it, has a cable built in. So I've also found myself using the charger to charge my camcorder when we have excess power. Alrighty friends, I got my fun new hat on and uh, just finished up work, I was working remote today. Woke up a little early so I could get everything done and just clocked out. So um, what I'm gonna be doing today is running the reef lines through the block and pulley system that's under the uh, boat. So we have an old line here. You can see that runs up under all the fiberglass up there. And it's actually tied to a plate right at the base of the mast there. You can see it. I think the previous owner basically just left that kind of the way it is so that I could run a line through it. So it might at one point have been for the uh, boom bang maybe but I'm going to use it to run the line through for the reefing line. On the other side we already have a pre-existing green reefing line so that one does not need to be run through here however it does need to be run through the boom. I used my sewing hole thanks to my dad again for getting me that and just went ahead and basically just joined these uh, two together and I'll just put some duct tape on them just to make sure that nothing gets caught up as they're being fed through. All right, well, here's a nice surprise for you all. So I was trying to feed that line through and it was getting caught. And the reason it was getting caught is because there is a knot in the line right here. Oddly enough, I don't know why the knot's there, but the real surprise is how disgusting it is in here. So I just took off this top panel. So what I'm gonna do is clean this, obviously. <laughs> and then uh, I'll probably just manually run through the reefing lines, or the reefing line, I should say, and get rid of this pretty old, I don't, even, I don't even know if I can untie that, to be honest, it's so beat up. So this is lovely, but the cool thing is I can now see down in the cabin. So make sure I close those while I'm cleaning this, of course. And there's a little wasp nest there, so hopefully he's still not in there. <laughs> Otherwise, he's gonna be coming out at me. And here's an example of some of this, some of this stuff. I thought I'd gotten out a lot of it at one point, but it seems like a decent amount still remained. And I'm also, while I'm here, I'm also gonna lube these up, because you can hear them. They've definitely seen some, some better days, that's for sure. So you can see I got this area relatively clean. However, I pulled up this big panel. You can see all the nastiness under there. It's pretty darn heavy. And here's another look over here. And that's the difference. White and dirt. What are you doing there, Ash? Hmm? Shout out to Sid for the really good idea of propping this up with one of the docking poles or boat hooks, whatever you want to call them. So you can see how dirty it is. I just finished scrubbing up this area. I'm going to move on to the center and then also finish up over there. And you can see all the crud coming out on the boat down there. But it's going to feel good to get this all finally cleaned up because you can still see the dirt when I look down there. Plus I'll be able to run the lines the way that they originally should be, and I'll get to lube everything up. So, worth the nastiness and the work. 
All right, so I cleaned out under the panel you see here and let it dry for a little bit. And now I went ahead and screwed it back down. You can see I have the reef line, which is run here right next to the jib halyard. Blue line there. Actually runs underneath it in the pulley system. See if I come up here. There we go. Runs right underneath it. And underneath it through that pulley system. And then up there. So now I'm going to go ahead and just lube these um, pulleys slash blocks up. I always forget which one's which. A little bit. Just to make sure that they're good for the future. Nice and clean. How's it going down there? Go ahead. See if I can swing it, swing it around a little bit. There we go. Looking good. Just finished up the uh, the new steaming light and the new deck light and got it mounted in with some new stainless. So looking pretty good. Apologies if there's a lot of wind noise. I'm up here and it's actually kind of a windy day and I'm using my phone. So this is only about halfway up the mast or so. What's going on there, Sid? So we're having a beautiful Sunday. You have to speak up a little bit, the engine's a little loud. We're having a beautiful Sunday on our neighbor's boat. Yeah. Boat, uh, exploring the Chesapeake. Mm hmm. Picking out cool spots for us to anchor this summer. Very nice. So this is a uh, Juneau NC11. Very nice. We're back here on the uh, aft portion of the boat. Nice swim platform. <laughs> There's Milty dancing. Those clouds are so pretty, aren't they? Yeah. Really fluffy. Well, with only two 100 watt panels, we are hitting 13.3 amps. I actually just cleaned them off. They had a ton of pollen up on them. You can see the sun is pretty much directly overhead and we're getting sun directly down on those two panels. So with the additional two in there, we will definitely start to get to the 25 amp um, range, which is pretty exciting. That's a lot of power, um, a lot more than I think we will need unless we're running quite a bit of uh, electronics on board and laptops. But it's really, those extra panels are really for on cloudy days when some goes behind the clouds like it is right now. It's about, they're about halfway behind, the, it's about halfway behind the clouds right now and you can see it drops down to three amps. So clouds make a huge, huge difference. And for instance, in this case, you know, a little bit of overcast, we would have six amps rather than three with the two panels, which um, is what I'm more concerned about is kind of our minimum power gener or excuse me our maximum power generation under cloudy conditions rather than our maximum power generation under sunny conditions because obviously two panels is enough for this boat 
um, given you know that it's sunny out the whole day, but that's not always the case. Generally, you're gonna have some cloudy days. We have a pretty interesting line in the water up here. Out on the boat with a couple of friends today, and we did have a lot of wind and kind of like a little mini storm last night. But this line, if I had to guess, has something to do with where the fresh water from some of the uh, tributaries of the Chesapeake are meeting the brackish or salinated water of the bay. Either that, or this is like muddy-ish water from all the rain and everything. So I'm interested to see what it looks like as we get closer here. Looks like we have a balloon up there too, which is never a uh, never a good sight. different when you're over it. It's just lighter in, in color. Let's see if you look that way. Got our, our friends back there. Today is a beautiful and warm Sunday afternoon. It's a little bit after 12. And I wanted to show you all something kind of cool that we do when we have excess solar energy. So right now, uh, the refrigeration only kicks on when the freezer or the refrigerator have to cool off. And for instance, when that's not running, when it's on the off cycle, which it is right now, we generally have a lot of excess solar energy since the panels can bring in around noon, um, the, the, the two that we have out there bring in around 13 amps or so, um, which is quite a bit of, of power, uh, especially if they're clean, they've been cleaned off recently. So when we have that excess power, you can see right now we're drawing about five amps, and the majority of that, since there really isn't anything on right now, is coming from the uh, DC power port down here, which we have multiple things that I'm charging. So. We're actually charging here. This is a uh, portable battery pack. So you can see the, the light there, charging that up. We used that um, yesterday to charge one of our phones. So I got that charging. And I also have uh, where I had my phone charging. And now I have my camera light. So you can see that's charging up. And then believe it or not, uh, we actually have a little um, this is like one of those little micro uh, DC to AC inverters. So this takes the 12 volt DC and turns it into a standard household outlet. So this uh, handles up to 150 watts, which is a little tiny one. And what we're actually doing is we are charging the dinghy battery pack. So you can see the red light there, so just charging. Now this battery pack actually charges directly off of, if you look there, 12 volts DC. So it's very, inefficient. Uh, I wouldn't say very, but it's relatively inefficient. Probably losing 10, 15, 20% um, of the power is wasted as heat. Converting from 12 volts DC to 120 volts AC, back to 12 volts DC, and then into the battery pack. So eventually I'm going to wire up a dedicated 12 volt line specifically for charging the battery pack, which will reduce these inefficiencies in these uh, in the inverter, and I believe that's technically a converter because it's AC to DC that will eventually be run off of the new 12 volt panel that I put up here, as well as some of the other electronics. But going back to the original topic of using the excess solar, uh, I actually found out that the uh, this this outlet here 
the breaker for it, which is actually on uh, fans, it's the, the fans breaker, that I believe is a five amp breaker. So we're kind of flirting with the five amps right now. So I don't know if this socket was only rated for five amps, if the cabling's only rated for five amps or what, or for whatever reason, they just decided to use a five volt um, breaker. But I'm most likely going to upgrade that and maybe make it 10 to 15, just since we're probably gonna be running laptop chargers on this, which will pull um, 60 watts for USB-C PD for power delivery which this has a USB-C PD, um, but it's only 18 watts, this one here in the center. So in the event that that socket is not rated for more than five amps, which very well could be the case, then I have a nice blue C systems here. I picked up a couple of these. I just have some extras laying around. This one's rated for up to 15 amps DC, which is perfect. Can you see him? So craziest thing, we just I was changing the or cleaning the C strainer for our um, HVAC unit. You can see it's a little dirty. There is a minnow in there. I don't know what side he was on of the C strainer prior or before we took the C strainer off, but I was very surprised when I opened it up and there was movement inside. <laughs> and I figured it was like a bug or something that had gotten sucked in, but. Apparently there's a little minnow, so we're gonna see if we can get him out and I guess put him back in the back in the Chesapeake. There he is. We have a fish. A little minnow. Let's keep him. See the other things floating around in there? See him? Like little shrimp or crustaceans or something. What the heck? We have like a whole biome.